April 28th, catching up with the world. I'm the Doom Wizard. Welcome back. We have so much to catch up on. This week was eventful, to say the least. And I'm not using any notes. This is pure memory, so bear with me. Before I go on, though, hit the like button and use the donation link below. It's really easy. I could use your help with my transition next week into a new way of life. I'm looking forward to it. Now, I'm going to start with world events and then work my way back to the states where things are an absolute chaotic mess. I'm aware we live in a dystopian capitalist nightmare where each and every one of us is a disposable digit alienated from each other. There is no hope and salvation for change, certainly not in politics, and even on a societal level. The tipping point is past. We can move on. Now, around the world, in Southeast Asia, there was a heat wave that killed dozens of people, particularly in Thailand, but also neighboring countries. People were told to stay inside, air condition, and use more energy. Blinken visited Xi in China and talked about a few things, one of those informing China not to send more arms and munitions to Ukraine. Hypocritically, we send billions of dollars over to Ukraine. Xi said, nah, we'll just do our own thing. In fact, we'll send a few dozen planes over the Taiwan Strait to let you know that we're still a dominating force in the area. Meanwhile, North Korea is sending ships with cargo through Chinese ports to supply to Russia. A missile landed a few miles outside Poland's border from Russia, so there's that. And wine harvest is basically non-existent in Europe. The Arctic is experiencing sunburnt animals from the ozone hole opening back up again. And in Uganda, because of deforestation from growing tobacco plant from humans, because we're special and we have addictions, animals are forced to eat virus-laden poo from bats, including chimpanzees and gazelle. Yeah, feasting on virus-laden poo. And then... America. What a mess. Where do we start? Well, in California, Los Angeles, they're building plexiglass barriers around bus drivers now to protect from rising crime, shutting down the subway, because people are getting stabbed there. And you could say it's the immigrants, yeah, and the immigrants in Europe and everywhere, because there's too many of us, and we can't support this many people on the planet. The planet is ridding itself of the parasite that is us. U.S. Postal Service worker was robbed at gunpoint. Biden had its correspondence dinner, his correspondence dinner where he, you know, spoke foul words of that other guy who's in trial and getting his ass handed to him. That's our country right now. Two geriatric men fighting each other for a population that remains dim-witted and aloof to any environmental crises or existential problem we have. And if you need proof, look at the viewership of my last video, which barely got 300 views. If you want to know how completely, totally, irreconcilably fucked we are. Then the protests. See... I understand youthful energy wanting to change the paradigm, but it ain't going to happen. You know that phrase. You're familiar. We aren't changing the power structure, and we're too embedded in our energy system, as well as the ruling elites, a term I hate to use, are flying around in private jets and living in their high tower offices and condos. Can't reach them. The Electoral College is a joke. We know capitalism is a myth. Social mobility doesn't exist. You work and work and get nowhere. And they control what you see and hear on the mainstream. 
to some extent, I agree that there is a narrative being pushed from those in power to retain their power. I'm no dummy. However, I still fall into the camp of understanding data and evidence as to the best of our ability conducted by reputable and clear-eyed scientists such as James Hansen. I can think of, for one, Leon Simmons, a few others. And so these protests, you know, where I stand, I'm anti-war. I think it's almost impossible to not see their plea as valid as these universities are spending millions and perhaps billions of dollars profiting off of death in another country far away. And if you look at the police force present and their capacity to shut down these protests, you know, they have AR-15s and zip ties. It's obvious that there's not going to be change. I mean, you know, it's fun to watch and gets our media attention, our collective mass. At this point, the only real directive is eco-terrorism. I mean, you just got to start you know, people and burning offices and tipping cars and throwing riots at this point because this peaceful protest prospect isn't working out for us and it never has. Take a look around if you need demonstration of that. I feel it, this dystopian nightmare, how it tries to intrude my thoughts and provoke neuroses. I'm going to take your unsolicited advice now and maybe just tune out. Listen to the birds and the wind through the trees. Just take life as it goes. We are so beyond salvation at this point. I try to make this entertaining. And you've been with me for a while. Many of you. I just felt it was... The best thing I could do was stand up and tell the truth about our predicament. We are so entrenched in our energy system and fiat currency, a fake stock market inflated by everything. We're gone. And the fascist boot is about to drop in November, reminding us of this. So get your beanie weenies and basements full of survival gear because you'll need it. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys around. See what next week brings on planet Earth of too many humans consuming too many resources. It's just crazy. It's just insanity right now. I try to think of the critters at the bottom of the ocean floor and dolphins swimming with surfers you know, to get my mind off these trials and the corruption and the greed and the... We ruined it. Thank you for being here with me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.